My name is Mike Herman Jr. I'm the spotter on the number 17 Fast and All Ford for Roush Fenway Racing in the NASCAR Cup Series. Ready, green. All rolling here. Now 4341 at line out back. All two by two formed up. I'm from Kannapolis, North Carolina. Uh, I grew up in racing uh, my entire life. Uh, my father uh, worked on Del Earnhardt's uh, family bush car over on Sedan Avenue in Kannapolis for, uh, for around 10 years in the early 80s. Uh, so I was fortunate enough as a, as a young kid to be able to hang out over there on many summer nights and uh, uh, learn the game of racing from, uh, uh, from the best in the business. So I was fortunate to victory visit Victory Lane when I was a kid many, many times and you know I knew you know right off the bat when I was there, you know, when you're when you're standing in Victory Lane with a learn heart and you're uh, you're ten years old and you look to your left and you see your dad, you look to your right, you see Dell Earnhardt, you know, in your mind is Superman and, and right then you're you know your future's pretty much settled that that's uh, that's all you're ever gonna do and uh, racing's all I've ever ever done. Started racing go karts when I was eight years old. I uh, had a long uh, career in, in karting, uh, which I still look back on fondly. Uh, that you know, that propelled me up into into being a short track driver, and, and was fortunate enough to uh, uh, to race short track cars uh, for I don't know around 17 years. Uh, you know, we had success along the way. Uh, won two track championships at, at Concord Motor Speedway in the NASCAR Late Model Stock Car Division. Uh, you know, and, and at that point in time, we're still on a pathway to hopefully being a, a professional race car driver. Continued on that path for a long time, and uh, to finally, uh, you know, funding changed, uh, things changed, and, and that's when I decided to uh, uh, switch over to, to being a spotter and uh, started working the the path up. Just uh, it's just like driving, you know. You you know, being a spotter, you, you basically start at the at the bottom and uh, try to work your way up to the top, uh, which finally happened in, in 2013. Uh, got hired at Michael Walter Grayson to be the spotter for Mark Truex Jr. Uh, I did that one year until the, the 56 car closed down. Uh, moved over here to Roush Fenway in, in 2014 and, and have been here on the 17 car ever since. Uh, one of the biggest takeaways that, that you know I look at in racing is, is the family aspect of it. Um, you know, and, and I've got a lot of guys that, that aren't blood family that, that you know, that work for me in my short track program, that, that work alongside me in, in Cup Series racing today uh, up on the spotter stand. Uh, you know, I've got a connection to a lot of guys up there that's, uh, that's unique. Uh, you know, I've got fabricators, mechanics, um, you know, that's scattered all through the garage that's, that's worked with me, engine tuners, um, you know, so it's kind of a, you know, it's something that you look back on finally to know that, uh, you know, that might quite possibly be, you know, when I'm done racing, um, you know, what you're remembered for. Top lane, there's a one, 16, you're clear bottom to the eight if you need it, 16's outside, 16's got nothing out back. You know, my technique as a spotter, um, he goes back to my driving career. Um, you know, I tell everybody all the time, I didn't, I didn't intend on being a spotter, you know what I mean? I'm still a driver at heart. Um, you know, uh, I wish I was still short track racing to this day. It's my, you know, it's my first love. Um, I would have loved to, you know, been able to, uh, you know, move up the ladder to the Cup Series. But in reality, I was a short track racer. Um, you know, so I still, when I spot, I, it's like I'm driving. You know, I, I put myself inside the car subconsciously. And, you know, so basically, you know, I'm looking through Chris's eyes, you know, just like I'm driving a car. And that's the way I spot. You know, I spot just the way I wanted to be spotted for when, when I drove. And, you know, I think that's... Uh, that's crucial. So you know, when you're listening to me on on race day, you can you can kind of think about that and realize that that's I'm high top, but I'm I'm really just riding right there, you know, with the car. You know, it's almost like if you're if you're playing a video game or or I racing, you can you know you can kind of use that view that hovers right above the car. That's uh, that's what I use. So uh, you know, that's my technique to to try to be a good spotter. You know, staying calm as a spotter is one of the most uh, you know, crucial things because if, if I would get amped up, then the, the driver would get amped up. You know, uh, again, that goes back to my driving experience. You know, uh, you know, I was an aggressive, you know, short track driver, and and you know, I needed to be kept calm. You know, because I, you know, I was, a, you know, a guy that would go hard, and uh, you know, so the spotter's there to try to, you know, help calm things down, and you know, and and, and get you to be. And we use that word nice and smooth all the time, but it's. 
it's serious. You got to be nice and smooth to make speed and in, in, uh, in race cars. So I think it's that experience and, and doing it so much that you you've been there, you've seen every scenario, uh, and you just uh, you know it just gives you a level of calmness just just from an experience standpoint and 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 to you know just realize that the, the the job that you're that you're trying to do and that's part of it. You know, I, I really look at all the extra races that I do as a as a a training tool for me because you know I spot in the truck series, uh, Xfinity series, ARCA series. So by the time Sunday rolls around with a Cup car, uh, you know I've I've seen all the track conditions. I've, I've seen how those races have played out. Uh, you know, you're not just jumping in uh, blindly on Sunday, which is even more crucial now with our uh, one-day shows with no practice. Uh, you know, so you have a you have a feel for you know for what's going on. Uh, taking that even a step further, uh, you know, before I start the Daytona 500, I'm probably already, I think it's around 15 or 16 races in on the season, starting with the you know the 24-hour uh, race, the Rolex 24 at Daytona, uh, you know, which is a long, grueling race. You know, us spotters, we we joke that. You know, how much worse can it get because once you spot the Rolex 24 uh, and you know we, we pretty much all spot for 12 hours you know in, in different shifts um, you know it, it, it kind of you know makes a three and a half four hour cup race not not be so bad um, you know so going into the 500 you know I've been at New Smyrna every night um, spotting and, and so I'm I always joke around by, by day 20 500 day I'm I'm already in mid-season form out front now with the 19. Holding the top here, he's been clear both lanes. 16 point up to the one, then half up to the 41. My favorite, uh, my favorite tracks to spot at are, you know, obviously being a short track guy that, you know, I love Bristol, uh, you know, I love Martinsville, uh, you know, the true short tracks, uh, you know, those are, are some of my favorites. You know, also, uh, uh, you know, I like super speedway racing at Daytona and Talladega. You know, uh, you know I feel like the, you know, the spotters, uh, uh, you know, the modern spotter of today is, is very involved at every racetrack that we go to. So uh, you're very much a part of the team uh, that can uh, help or hurt the outcome of the day. But at Daytona and Talladega, you know, obviously that's the place that we're the most crucial, um, you know, when you're trying to uh, help plan the offense and the defense and the race strategy of, of how things are going to play out. So Daytona, Talladega are, are some of my favorites. Uh, if you're waiting for something to happen um, really in real time, uh, then you're probably not going to be a cup spotter. Uh, you have to really anticipate uh, things to try to get ahead of it, and, and you're playing angles all the time. So um, we're uh, we're finicky guys. We all stand in the exact same spot at, at every racetrack every week. Where you know it's like. Or like school kids that when you pick your desk on the first day of class that's where you go back to that's the same way we are and there's reasons behind that there's you know because that's the view and the angle that you're you're used to dealing with if if I'm used to standing uh, towards turn four on the spotter stand and all of a sudden I just go and choose to pick down towards turn one I, it's a totally different uh, view than what you're used to oh it's a zero one here one's going to pick up the push here they're all pushing out. We've got a lot of road racing coming up this year, and, and it, it, it's also a unique uh, uh, role for the spotter because we'll use multiple spotters at each road course. And we've got some new road courses coming up, uh, like Circuit of Americas, that you know that obviously I've never been to, and, and most never nobody else has been to. So it'll be, uh, um, you know, the the Cup schedule can be a grind every year, and um, you know it's a lot of repetition. We go to a lot of same places all the way down to, you know, you pretty much know when you get to Kansas on Friday where you're going to go to dinner. When it comes to additional spotters, I try to use the same crew, um, you know, for, uh, you know, through the truck series, through the Xfinity series. So by the time we get to Sunday, we've already run, uh, worked the bugs or kinks out of our processes because it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, listening to MRN or PRN you know my guys that are the number two and number three sometimes number four spotter uh, we gotta have to know how to where to hand off how to hand off uh, so that way we're not talking over each other uh, and that kind of thing so it's good to work with that same crew we've had some memorable wins here at, at Roush Fenway and, and you know our our plate wins at Daytona Talladega in 2017 are, are obviously uh, you know at the, at the top of my list uh, 
I've also been fortunate to win at Daytona with Ryan Reed in the Xfinity Series. Um, you know, won a championship in the Xfinity Series with Chris Boucher, my current driver now, in a 17. Um, you know, which was a um, which was kind of a reunion for us when when he come back to drive the 17 car. It was it was something that you know we already had worked together in the Xfinity Series and and had a, had, you know we had a big win at Dover. Uh, back our championship season there in, in 2015, so it was, uh, um, you know, it was just kind of like getting back to work, you know, versus, uh, you know, learning somebody new, so, uh, but every win here at Roush Fenway has been special, and, and we're always looking for more. You know, I always say the same thing coming to the green every week. I always say, all right, let's let's uh, let's go to work, and, you know, that was a, uh, that's always a nod back to one of my biggest supporters and my longtime sponsor in my short track program was Alan Downham. Uh, you know, he told me each week before, uh, uh, you know, before our short track races, he said, all right, let's go to work, you know, and, and he was a businessman that always put his work boots on. Uh, it didn't matter if he was in a, in a suit to go to a corporate meeting that day, he's always got his work boots on and he laces them up tight. So every time I say, let's go to work, uh, it's a nod to him because that's actually, you know, it's what we're doing. Uh, we're going to work and, you know, and I feel like that, you know, our Fastenal team, that's what, that's where all, what we're all about. We're a working man's team. And, uh, you know, so we're, you know, listening to my race audio is not gonna probably the, be the most comical and they're not, we're not gonna tell jokes and that kind of thing. But, you know, I just try to, uh, uh, paint the picture of, of what's going on on the racetrack and, and that's not only for, for Chris but as for uh, uh, you the fan there at home uh, listening in as well. Alright now let's go to work here 180 gate laps first stage 60 still got the comp caution at 25 we both tight good luck coming to green.